Hello friends and welcome. If there's one drugstore brand that's had really amazing growth and success over the past few years, it's e.l.f. Cosmetics. Since its founding in 2004, e.l.f. has grown from a tiny e-commerce site to a major player in the cosmetic industry. In fact, of the top five mass market color cosmetics firms, which includes Maybelline, L'Oreal, CoverGirl, and Revlon, e.l.f. increased its share by 150 points in its fiscal year 2023 third quarter, almost twice that of its closest competitor, which is Maybelline. And it expects a 38 to 39% overall sales increase in 2023. And much of that growth has been fueled through a very strong social media presence, especially on TikTok. ELF has a huge share of the Gen Z market. So the question is, since ELF pays very close attention to a younger demographic, do their products work for those of us with mature skin? And that's exactly what we'll be checking out today as I apply a full face of ELF Cosmetics products. Before I do so, I want to extend a warm welcome to those of you who are new to this channel. My name is Elise, and this channel is all about, and specifically designed for, those of us who are quite a few years ahead of the millennial and Gen Z generations. In fact, if you're in your fifth decade or beyond, I think you'll find a home here. Since I'm a working professional makeup artist whose mission and passion is helping those of us with mature skin look our best, I focus on the makeup products, tips, and techniques that make the biggest difference for us now. And I sometimes also touch on fashion and wellness. So if this sounds like a spot where you'd feel at home, I hope you'll subscribe before you leave today. Before I dive into applying all of this e.l.f. makeup in front of me, I just want to let you know that this video is not sponsored by e.l.f. and also take a minute to share with you the really fascinating story behind how e.l.f. got started. And by the way, if you've ever wondered, e.l.f. stands for Eyes, Lips, Face. The company was founded by a then 23-year-old New York University business student, Joseph Shama, Joseph's father, Alan, and a 31-year-old beauty entrepreneur, Scott Vincent Borba, who previously launched Hard Candy Cosmetics. Joey's wife had recently come home with five new makeup products and a bill that was over $200. Well, Joey thought this was ridiculous and wanted to find another solution in order to fill a gap in the market for inexpensive, high-quality cosmetics. Soon after this experience, Joey and Scott met at a party and decided to sit down to brainstorm a few days later. Scott has also shared that they noticed that there were often expensive cars parked outside of 99 cent makeup stores. He saw all these women with Louis Vuitton purses, but they were buying inexpensive lip balm and nail polish. Initially, Joey and Scott launched the company with 10 products, each costing $1. Even today, many of ELF's products are under $7, and their amazing bite-sized eyeshadow quads are only $3. But now let's get this party rolling with makeup application for the eyes. ELF does make an eye primer, but it's described as being sheer, which I didn't think would cover up the discoloration on my eyelids, which most of us do have. So I went ahead and already applied my Rare Beauty eye primer. But if any of you have used the ELF eye primer, I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. For my brows, I used ELF's Instant Lift Brow Pencil. And surprisingly, I find the color taupe to be my best shade. I really like the fact that this pencil is fairly thick, so I'm able to do my brows faster. But if you're looking for a very thin brow pencil. ELF does make one, and it's called their Ultra Precise Pencil. Since my brows are more and more pulling a disappearing act, I also like to use ELF's Wow Brow, which is a great dupe for Benefit's Gimme Brow. It contains small fibers which add thickness to the brow, which I definitely need. I like to start with the shade Taupe and then touch it up with a deeper shade called Deep Brown if I need to add a little bit more depth to the brows. So these are my go-to ELF products for my eyebrows. ELF has some great eyeshadow sticks in both matte and shimmer colors, but since I'm more a fan of powder eyeshadows, I'm going to go ahead and use ELF's Bite Size Eyeshadow Quads. The quality does vary a bit with different quads, but the four I'm most often dipping into are the Cream and Sugar Quad, the Pumpkin Pie Quad, and this one has more warm tone colors, and the Truffles Quad, which has deeper colors. Each of these quads has two matte shades and two shimmer shades, as you saw. 
But the quad I reach for most often is the I Love You A Latte palette, which you've heard me talk about often on other videos. The reason that I love it so much is because I think it's just about a perfect balance of neutral matte shades. I'm going to go ahead and start with the I Love You A Latte palette, and then I'll probably add in some colors from some of the other bite size eyeshadow palettes as well. And this is the I Love You A Latte palette I'll be using. I like to start off with the very lightest shade all over my lids. And just a touch under the arch of my brows to help lift my eyes. And a little bit on the inner corner as well. And then I like to take the two colors in the middle and combine those for my crease area and the outer part of my lid. If I'm in a hurry or if I'm running errands and I want a quick look, I almost always go to this eyeshadow quad. It's so easy and it blends in perfectly. And I love the fact that these colors work on just about everybody. And now with very little color on my brush, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit higher toward the brows. And this gives me a nice subtle gradation of color. Then I like to just look into the mirror with my eyes just a little bit open just to see if things look even. And now I'm going to take the deepest color and put it on the outer part of my crease and the outer part of my eyelid. And to get a lighter application, I'm using a fluffier brush. And I'm lifting it up here above the crease, and which helps lift my eye. And now I'm taking the brush that I used for the light color on my lids and I'm going to just bring it in over here so I blend the edges. I want there to be a nice easy transition from the darkest shade to the lightest shade. And now I have just a little bit of that light color left on my brush and I'm just going to go over the outer edge again to make sure that there are no harsh edges whatsoever. And then I want to add a little bit of warmth just to the upper part of my crease and I'm going to use the pumpkin pie palette to do that. And I'm going to combine these two colors that are on the end of the palette. And I'm going to use a more precise brush to add this little amount of warmth. I always think it's very flattering to add some cool and warm tones together, or in this case, neutral and warm tones. And now some blending. ELF also has some beautiful liquid glitter and liquid metallic eyeshadow colors, which I've never tried before. So today I'm going to apply Pinky Swear, which is a liquid glitter on the middle of one of my eyelids. And I'm going to use the shade Moon, which is a liquid metallic on the other. But first, let me swatch them for you. And I think you can tell which one has a little bit more glitter to it. So this is the Pinky Swear glitter. Oh my goodness, there is a lot of glitter there. They were serious when they said glitter. And I'm going to apply Moon on the other eyelid, and that's the metallic. And I'm just going to use my finger to pat that in. The metallic is on this eye and the glitter on this eye. For eyeliner, I could go several different directions. I could use the eyeshadow stick Cool Beans. Or I could use the e.l.f. No Budge Cream Eyeshadow in Plateau. Or I could use one of the deeper powder eyeshadow shades. I think I'll go ahead and use powder eyeshadow on one eye and try the No Budge Cream Eyeshadow on the other eye. For powder eyeshadow, I'm going to use the darkest shade, which is a matte in the Truffles palette. And I like using an eyebrow brush that's angled to do this. I think it works really well. That is a really deep shade. I think if I were to do it again, I'd use a darker brown, but I'm going to smudge it out a bit to soften it. And I'll put just a little bit on the outer third of my eye. I want those two areas to connect. And this is what I'll use on the other eye, the No Budge Cream Eyeshadow. I don't know if I have much playtime with this. I hope I do. And 
and I'll take a little bit on the outer third. I, I do like the soft quality of this and it's very easy to apply and I do have a little bit of time before it absolutely dries down. Since I have to use a Clean Beauty mascara on my sensitive eyes, I'll go ahead and apply my mascara off camera and I'll be right back. Now for face products. ELF has a new poreless putty face primer in a liquid rather than a cream formula, which I'm really excited to try today. I think this type of formula is much easier and faster to apply than their cream formula putty primer, which is in a jar. After applying this face primer or any face primer, it's necessary to wait a bit for this product to set before applying other face products. And here's the ELF poreless liquid face primer, which is a newer product. This is interesting. It has a little bit of a pink cast to it. That's good for my skin tone, which is cool. I wonder if it would work as well on warm skin tones. It probably won't make that much of a difference. I like the feel of it. This is nice. It feels very soft and very moisturizing. It gives a beautiful soft sort of petal feel to the face. I'm impressed. I've never used an e.l.f. foundation before and I hardly ever hear it talked about, so I have to admit I'm a little nervous about using it. It's their Flawless Satin Foundation and I have the shade Beige, which is for light, cool skin tone. And I hope it won't be too dark because there is one lighter cool shade, which is called Snow, which might have been a better choice. I guess we'll see. Boy, this is looking dark in the jar. Well, it's not looking as dark when I actually put it on my wrist. It was a little hard to pump out. I don't know if that pump is always going to be a little bit difficult or if it just was the use of it first time that made it more difficult. We'll find out. Now this, this probably is going to work. That's a nice, pleasant surprise. There is a little bit of a scent to it. Can't quite put my finger on what it is. It's not overwhelming, but it's definitely noticeable. So if you really need to use unscented products, this probably is not the foundation for you. It's pleasant fragrance. I have to say I'm rather unexpectedly pleasantly surprised by this foundation. It's hard to know if the primer is causing a tiny bit of glow or if it's the foundation itself. It is billed as a satin finish, so that means it probably does have a little bit of a glow to it, but it's, it's very pretty. I'm going to try the pump one more time to add a little bit more coverage to the middle section of my face. Oh good, that worked a little bit better that time. We'll see how buildable this foundation is. Just going to press it in where I need more coverage. Yeah, it is, it is building up without looking cakey, which is good news. Since this foundation is described as a satin finish, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of ELF's Halo Glow Liquid Filter to give my skin a little bit more glow on one side of my face. And I have shade 2. This has a large doe foot applicator. Okay, definitely I'm seeing more glow. I hope that's coming across on the camera. I like that. Let's take a close-up look at each side to see if you can tell the difference. This is a side where I've added some of the Halo Glow filter, and this is a side with just the foundation. I normally would use ELF's Hydrating Camo Concealer in the shade Light Peach as my under eye corrector, but ELF does make a putty color correcting eye brightener, which I'll go ahead and use today for the first time. I have the Light Medium and it also comes in five other shades. Once again, I may have been better off with the lightest shade called Fair, but let's go ahead and give the Light Medium a try. But first, I want to swatch the Light Medium shade of the color correcting eye brightener that's brand new and compare it to a swatch of the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in Light Peach, which is the color corrector I normally use. Oh, and you can certainly see a difference in the shade, how deep they are. The e.l.f. Camo Concealer in Light Peach is on top, and the new brightening corrector is underneath, and it is much darker. I definitely should have gotten the lighter color. So I think I'll use the eye brightening corrector 
on this side, and then I'll use my light peach camo concealer on the other, and we'll see if we can tell a difference. And this is what the color correcting brightener looks like. And here's a little bit of the light peach. And I'm just gonna dot these in with my finger. And actually, this color is it's maybe working okay. I do wish the camo concealers came with a little bit smaller applicator tip. I already know and love the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer, but today I'm going to try a new shade, Fair Rose, under my eyes, and I'll use the Fair Beige on the rest of my face. I'm just gonna dot a tiny bit of this Fair Rose here. This is the Fair Beige. It's probably also a little bit too light to use as a concealer on my age spots, but it'll blend in okay. And then we'll just dot in the Fair Rose here. Adding a little brightness under the eyes can really make a difference to our face. To prevent creasing, I'll set the under eye concealer with ELF's Halo Glow Setting Powder, and I'm gonna use the shade Pink, which will also add some brightness under the eye. Just gonna pat in a tiny little bit of this. Then I'm gonna take my puff and just press it in. For contouring, I'll use the e.l.f. Cream Contour Palette. This is a longtime favorite, and I love the fact that there are three different contour shades from which to choose. All of the shades have a bit of warmth to them. I'm going to go with the deepest shade since it has a slightly cooler undertone. Unfortunately, I can't use the lightest shade for light contouring because it's just too yellow for my skin. I'm going to use this deepest color. And I'm just going to start here and come forward just a little bit. And I'm also managing to contour my hair, <laughs> which I really don't want to do, but I'll do the other side. This adds just a little bit of definition to the face. I could go darker, but I don't want to have a very strong contour look. If you're hesitant about contouring, which I can understand, it's a technique which I think can be a little bit intimidating sometimes, but it's a pretty easy process, and I put a link to a video below which really goes into detail about how contouring can work and effective techniques to do it. I have two e.l.f. blushes from which to choose, so I'm going to go ahead and swatch both of them. I do wish the lightest pink shade, which is called Bora Bora, came in a luminous version, but since it doesn't, I'm going to go ahead and apply Bora Bora on one side and one of the luminous blushes on the other side. This is Bora Bora, which is a gorgeous pink, but it is matte. And this is the other shade. It's much more of a neutral pink. This has a luminous glow, and it's called Maui. The light matte shade Bora Bora is on top, and Maui, which has a little bit of luminosity, is below it. I'm going to apply Bora Bora on this side. Oh, it's such a pretty pink. If you like cool pink colors, I think you will love this blush. So pretty. And because I know it doesn't show up as well because of the lights, I'm going to make it a little bit stronger, which is more than I would wear during the day, but just so you can see it better. And this shade Maui is pinker than it actually looks in the container. And I'm using my favorite blush application brushes from Sephora. It's their number 56 brush. And this is Maui, which is much more neutral in color. Add a little bit more so you can see it better. Those apply so beautifully and easily, and I have to say that the blushes are two of my favorite products from e.l.f. Next, I'll add a touch of the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter to create a little bit more glow on one side of my face. And I'm going to apply this to the side where I had the matte blush. And we did add glow to this side of the face with the foundation as well. So hopefully this won't be too glowy, but this really blends out pretty easily. And this is a wonderful dupe for the far more expensive Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. Although e.l.f. does have lip liners, I somehow managed to miss ordering one, so I'll go ahead and use my L'Oreal Age Perfect Lip Liner. I do have two lipsticks and a gloss that I want to try, but I also have a product called Sheer Slick in the color Black Cherry, which I want to try on first. This is very sheer, so it's more of a slick light balm. 
I'm usually not a fan of these types of lip products since they can easily migrate into the fine lines around my lips, but I do want to just check out the color. But first, lip liner. And if any of you have any of the e.l.f. lip liners, let me know how they work for you. And this is the Sheer Slick lip product. So this is the color Black Cherry. I usually end up having to blend a couple of different lipstick shades together to get the shade that I want. So I ordered the two shades Effortless and Untamed. Effortless is a dusty mauve color and Untamed is a deep maroon purple. I'll swatch them for you so you can see them before I apply them. Effortless is the lighter shade on top and Untamed is below it. I would call this a nice neutral pink color and let's add a little bit of the deeper color over it. I have to say the packaging is pretty impressive on these. This is kind of a satin finish and it has a magnetic closure. And the gloss I'll wear over the lipstick is a newer shade called Pink Paloma. This is billed as a lip plumping gloss and I do feel a little bit of a tingling sensation, but it's not painful at all. And if you don't like the smell of coconut, e.l.f. has two other setting mists besides the dewy coconut setting mist that I'll be using today. But anytime I smell coconut, I'm transported to an oceanside beach. So I love this fragrance. I'm just going to spray it on a dampened makeup sponge and then press it onto my face. I think you probably noticed it was a nice sheer mist. Oh, I love the feel of this and I love the smell of this. And it is getting very hot in the studio, so I'm going to just apply a little bit more. Now let me go ahead and share with you the products I felt were the real standouts today. Both of the eyebrow products that I used today, the Instant Lift Brow Pencil as well as Wow Brow, really work beautifully well. They are a staple in my makeup routine. And the Bite Size Eyeshadow Quads really surpass all my expectations, especially the I Love You A Latte. But it's fun to blend in some of the colors from the other products as well. I was very impressed with the Liquid Poreless Putty Face Primer. It went on so beautifully, smelled a little bit of fragrance with it, but not overwhelming at all. But it was a very smoothing finish to my face. I really enjoyed it. The e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter, I think, has become a cult classic. It is absolutely beautiful to apply either alone as a highlighter, to mix in with foundation, or to wear it just on its own. It can be beautiful. And it is a wonderful $14 alternative to the very expensive Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, which I think runs around $44. I love e.l.f.'s Hydrating Camo Concealers. Light Peach is a wonderful correcting color for me. If you have a deeper skin tone, you want to go with a little bit deeper peach color. And the Light Beige and Fair Rose also work well. And I absolutely love the formula of the Putty Blush. It applies easily. It isn't overwhelming in the least. It blends in easily. Can't say enough good things about it. I particularly love the Luminous one, but actually mixing the matte color with the Luminous can give a nice delicate satin finish. And of course, as I just talked about, I love the Dewy Coconut Setting Mist. The products I most likely wouldn't purchase again are the Putty Color Correcting Eye Brightener because it wasn't very creamy, so it doesn't go on very easily. At least it didn't for me. And I didn't think it did as good a job of color correcting as the Camo Concealer in Light Peach. I'm also not a fan of the Lip Plumping Gloss. The applicator, I think, makes it a little bit difficult to apply because you can't get out very much at one time. Just not a real fan of that. But of course, I'm very spoiled by another lip gloss I've recently tried that I absolutely love, which is from Lawless. I also was very pleasantly surprised by the foundation and also the No Budge Eye Cream. And the rest of the products were certainly good, but not real standouts for me. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you've tried any of these e.l.f. products or any other e.l.f. products, I'd love to hear your thoughts on them. That's it for today, and I hope you'll join me again next Thursday for another video. Until then, I wish you good health and happiness, and hope you have a fabulous rest of your day.